essentially the, the more you post online, the more services you subscribe to, the easier you are to trick and trick being the important word here. Um, this is simply an attack of tricking the human brain. opinion that the biggest threat to business is employees personal digital space like I assess and analyze that horrible gray area in between businesses technical infrastructure and physical infrastructure and I sit somewhere in the middle there lurking around finding the vulnerabilities and I'm I'm seeing a huge increase in attackers targeting the people and not the technical infrastructure of the company um, and I guess it's all about the lane of least resistance for an attacker um, how can they make the most amount of money, if that's their motivation, in the easiest way without getting caught? This is very often targeting the people uh, at the business. And we, we upload and share an enormous amount of information online every day. And, you know, even without realizing it, for example, leaving a Google review is identifiable by an attacker and provides a really good opportunity to socially engineer you uh, and get you to click on that, a link download a voucher onto your system, believe that phone call or whatever that approach might be from the attacker. Um, essentially, the, the more you post online, the more services you subscribe to, the easier you are to trick and trick being the important word here. Um, this is simply an attack of tricking the human brain. Take all the technical jargon out of the way. You hear all these fancy phrases like advanced persistent threats, APT and other terms like it, but really, it boils down to trickery. If an attacker knows you intimately online, they'll be able to trick you. It's that simple. Um, lastly, I just want to point out the significant increase of the insider threat is a big threat we're seeing at the moment. This is becoming particularly prevalent in large organizations where it can be really difficult to identify those red flags. Um, as mentioned previously, attackers go for the lane of least resistance. Uh, if an attacker has an easier or quicker or safer option to recruit from within, they will. Uh, how do they do it? Again, it all depends on what they find online. But the main ways they'll do this, number one is for financial incentive. Number two uh, is blackmail. Again, how? They simply conduct open source intelligence gathering uh, you know of a select few of people uh, in an organization and see what they can find lurking around on, on the web and once again you'll be very surprised at what an attacker can find dating sites gambling accounts and all sorts of personal information that they can use against you so they're, they're my main threats to organizations Um, I think first and foremost, the realization that it is not just the C-suite that are targeted, it's actually quite the opposite. I mean, if you look back in history and understand how intelligence services have worked for centuries, you understand that they get most value from those that are not actually uh, the people that are deemed as the most important roles. Um, why is that? Well, it's really simple because naturally their target is down um, that you know the target that's not the person that's super aware and super um, vigilant to security in the in the bigger roles uh, are not as aware as the people in high positions so this is exactly the mentality of the hacker uh, they'll target new joiners people that are easily influenced you know 75 percent of workforces are still remote i mean it's not an exact statistic but globally we're talking around 75 percent are still remote workforces this means that some people that have joined your organization might not have even met a potential line manager. They certainly probably wouldn't have met people in the human resources department. Um, so this fact coupled with their a new joiner, and if they've got a large digital footprint equals that person is a huge target. They will infiltrate their personal environment and then start to pivot and go onto their, uh, their work networks. Um, and then that's where they're, they're going to be targeted. And I guess, recommendations solutions really is understand that gray area and address it don't shy away from it and in i talk about the gray area that's the the staff members personal digital footprints you can have those difficult conversations with your staff regarding those digital spaces and it doesn't have to be awkward or come across as oppressive 
um, and obtrusive, you know, looking into their personal life. You can make it fun and engaging. Ultimately, what you're teaching them is benefiting their families too. So just getting that message across is really important. Uh, continuous trainings, but not clicking on buttons to appease IT department. You know, the generic sort of annual training you get, you click on buttons and you subscribe and you say, yeah, I've done it. And it goes off to your line manager. Make them fun, interactive, engaging with real learning points that they can take away from themselves and their family and they'll remember them. And remember to train those people that are not in leadership and what are deemed as important roles first then work up because 90 percent of the time this isn't done companies work from the top down and that's the wrong way to do it um the next big thing in cyber security cyber crime i guess uh, i should touch upon it because it's a hot topic but artificial intelligence and the use of machine learning technology is of course um, one of the biggest subjects out there and you know it can be deemed as good and bad or both uh, it can help identify patterns, anomalies in large data sets, enabling quicker and more effective responses to cyber uh, threats. But conversely, it can help attackers understand the exact same large data sets and gather intelligence quicker for nefarious actions. Um, it's also allowing attackers to build incredibly complex and believable alias profiles online, uh, fake accounts, so to speak. And once again, this is used for trickery. And I keep using the word trickery because that is essentially how we're being targeted at the moment. We're being tricked. Uh, biometric authentication is also advancing really well. Biometrics, you know, fingerprint, facial recognition offers unique and secure identification methods. And um, integrating these authentication methods into systems enhances security and, and reduces the reliance on traditional passwords. And we're seeing that everyone is susceptible to, to breaches with password, particularly in the personal space, which is often where cyber criminals are going at the moment. Um, I feel as though we're in like a, a strange global lull with cyber security at the moment. And it's, it's such a busy period with good and bad news, worrying news, concerning news. Uh, advances in technology. It's quite a confusing space. So I just think it, it really is the perfect opportunity to take time and focus on the people in the organisation and the staff's personal digital spaces whilst technology uh, almost sorts itself out. Oh, uh, yeah, my favourite moment. I, I'll start with the traditional hunted, I guess, with members of the public being notional fugitives. And it going back a few years now, um, I can't remember the exact year, but it was when we achieved the first ever clean sweep in UK hunted history. It might actually be global hunted history because hunted's obviously filmed in lots of different countries. The Dutch may have pipped us to a clean sweep, but in any event, it was the first UK clean sweep we've got where no fugitive contestant uh, actually got to the finish line and, and, and won the money. Unfortunately, we didn't get the money if they didn't win, but uh, it sounds really harsh and I know people want to see a winner, but we take it incredibly serious. Uh, we're, we're doing this as, as if they're real fugitives on the run and we, we, we play this no different to how we would uh, normally. Um, and it's sort of a game of them and us. And we certainly don't want to be beaten by anyone. Um, talking about celebrity hunted, I think it probably would be um, catching a previous prime minister's father. Uh, if you remember, Stanley Johnson was on one of the celebrity versions. He was on the run with uh, Toff Johnson from, I think, Made in Chelsea. Uh, but Stanley had the most frustrating, or he was the most frustrating fugitive to hunt down because we knew where he was every single second of the day. He really didn't know how to uh, be a fugitive at all. We were just victims of bad luck every single day. Uh, don't forget, we've got like five or six cars to cover the entire United Kingdom. And every time we got to where we knew he was, he would go again and bimble off into the distance. He didn't even know we were behind him. But yeah, I guess catching him was uh, a funny moment, but also a relief because he was so frustrating. and. Um, I, I now do the Australian version, and I have to say, if you're a Hunted fan, this is Hunted at its absolute finest. It's an incredible production, highly recommended, not because I'm on it and I'm being biased, uh, but it is a truly great production. And the Australians have got a great reputation of uh, taking ideas and 
uh, injecting some steroids and making it an incredible show. So if you do have time to watch it, uh, highly recommend it. I guess any covert role requires mental agility and the ability to switch modes very, very quickly from inactive to thinking on your feet at a rapid rate. Um, covert operations, I guess, are, are never, ever simple. They're never straightforward. You can have a plan, but ultimately plan early, plan twice. The plan never comes to fruition because you just don't know what's going to happen. Um, you're essentially entering into the unknown space every single day, every single operation. You can only control so much in operations because um, what you can't account for is being able to control the fellow human being brain and also bad luck. But going back to that mental agility and the ability to adapt and switch and maybe make good mistakes as you go along is one of the key skill sets. Uh, I guess all of the cliches are true, you know, patience, mental resilience, teamwork, confidence, and of course, uh, well, you can have confidence and self-confidence, but not spilling into arrogance, of course. But most of all, um, I think you need a good sense of humor to do any covert work. It can be incredibly stressful. And if you let the stress get under your skin, uh, unfortunately, you won't last very long. So that's where humor uh, and a good sense of humor comes in and is absolutely essential.